Hey, it's John from StopSaving.com and this is the final video in our section on trading indicators. As I've said at the outset, the goal of this course is to focus on quality over quantity. For this reason, I've only included the indicators you need to know and covered those in depth rather than making a course with hundreds of different indicators that are more likely to give you analysis paralysis than actually help you become a better trader. So in keeping with the mantra of quality over quantity, we're going to look at Fibonacci levels. These are based on an ancient mathematical number sequence created thousands of years ago. But because they're so closely watched by traders, they can be an extremely useful tool to have in your trading arsenal. So with all that out the way, let's jump in. And here's what you'll learn in this video. Number one, the history of the Fibonacci sequence and how you can see it throughout nature. And that's tree branches, seashells, and so on. Two, how to get Fibonacci ratios from the Fibonacci sequence and how they tend to provide key levels of price support or resistance with investments. Three, how to use Fibonacci retracement levels in your strategy. And finally, number four, how to use Fibonacci extension levels in your strategy. Now, I said earlier that the Fibonacci sequence is an ancient mathematical concept, and I really wasn't kidding. The sequence was first described in ancient Indian mathematics, and over 1000 years later, an Italian mathematician named Leonardo Bonacci later known as Fibonacci, formalized and introduced the sequence to the Western world. That was in his 1202 book, Liber Abaci, if my pronunciation is correct. This photo shows a statue of Fibonacci in the Composanto di Pisa, which you can see for yourself if you ever happen to be in the northern edge of Cathedral Square in Pisa, Italy. And here's an excerpt of Liber Abaci, where Fibonacci explains some of the maths, if you happen to speak old school Latin. So with that ancient history lesson now out of the way, you're probably wondering what all the fuss is about these Fibonacci numbers. Well, here's how the sequence works. If you start with a number 0, and add a 1 to it, you get the number 1. Then, if you add a 1 to that number 1, you get 2. Simple enough. Now, if you add your first answer, 1, to your second answer, 2, you get the number 3. You then take that number 3 and add the answer before it, which is 2, to get 5. This goes on and on until you get the sequence, which looks like this. And I'll spare you the pain of reading it all out aloud. Here's where it gets interesting though. This sequence appears all over nature. You can find it in things like flower petals, seashells, and even tree branches. So take a look at this image of a tree on the right hand side. The first branch splits into two branches. Then one branch grows first to give the next number in the sequence three. If you plant a tree, there's a good chance it will follow a similar pattern as it grows. The Fibonacci sequence can be used to derive something called the Golden Fibonacci Ratio. You'll find this all over nature too, but also on your favorite price chart. So here's a table to show how we get the Golden Ratio. And let's start with the Fibonacci retracements. You'll learn about Fibonacci retracements soon, but first, let's see how we get the Golden Ratio using the Fibonacci sequence on the left. So start by dividing the current number in the sequence by the number that comes after it. For example, if you divide the number 1 by 1, you get 1. Now divide the number 2 by 1 and you get 0 0.5. If you divide 3 by 2, you get 0 0.667. If you keep doing this, the number will get closer and closer to 0 0.618. And this is what we call the Golden Fibonacci Ratio, which we'll use for Fibonacci retracements later on in this video. And then there's Fibonacci Extensions. Again, we'll cover that soon. 
But as far as the maths goes, this time you divide the current number in the sequence by the number before it. 1 divided by 1 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2, and 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So you keep doing this, and as the sequence gets bigger, your answer will get closer and closer to the number 1.618. This is the golden ratio for Fibonacci extensions. And here's where it gets even more interesting, especially if you're a bit of a maths nerd like me. If you divide the number 1 by 0 0.618, you get 1.618. And if you divide the number 1 by 1.618, you get, you guessed it, 0 0.618. So that's the maths behind Fibonacci numbers. Let's now move on to how you can actually use them in your trading or investment strategy. We'll start with Fibonacci retracements. These are key levels where the price might pull back to. So let's start with none other than Bitcoin, and I'm using the one week chart here. Keep in mind that I'm using the log chart here in TradingView. I'll show you how to set that up in the next section of this course, but just understand that log charts are much better to use for longer term timeframes as they focus on percentage gains rather than on price gains. First, let's define what a Fibonacci retracement is, and that is this. It's when a price move, which can be up or down, retraces or pulls back by a certain percentage in the opposite direction of the move. So, after Bitcoin's top at around $20,000 in December 2017.1, it dropped all the way down to about $3,000 over the next year or so, to point two. It then staged a massive rally from point two to almost $14,000 at point three. But that ended up being staunch resistance for the Bitcoin price. It was also the 0.618 Fibonacci retracement level of the initial leg down from point one to point two. Put another way, the rally from point two to point three was a 61.8% retracement of the initial drop from point one to point two. So given the accuracy of this measure, it really makes you wonder, is this a self-fulfilling prophecy among traders or is it actually a natural phenomenon as in nature? Well, without getting too philosophical, I would argue that it's a bit of both. Many big traders watch Fibonacci levels, so that's where they tend to take profits. And at the same time, the markets are a mathematical expression of human emotion, which I would argue is a part of nature too. It's not just crypto where you might find Fibonacci ratios working their magic. Here's a one month chart of the S&P 500 index and how it crashed and then slowly recovered in the wake of the global financial crisis. From the top, point one, the S&P slid over 50% to point two in early 2009. It then started to recover and rallied from point two to point three where it ran into big resistance at the 0.618 Fibonacci retracement level. So that rally was a 61.8% retracement of the initial move down, and then there was a major pullback. Of course, the index went on to go much higher in the years that followed, but it wouldn't have hurt to take a bit of profits at the 0.618 Fib level, or even take a cheeky short position. So far we've learned about the 0.618 golden Fibonacci retracement level used in trading, but there are a few others you should also be aware of. The 0.236 Fib is calculated by dividing a number in the sequence by the number 3 spaces after it, and it represents a 23.6% pullback of a price move. The 0.382 divides a Fibonacci number by the number two spaces after it, and that's when a move pulls back 38.2%. The 
Then there's the 0.5 Fib retracement. And actually, this has nothing to do with the Fibonacci sequence. It's completely made up by traders. Still, it's when the price retraces 50% of the move, and it's something that a lot of traders watch. The 0.618 Fibonacci we have already covered. And lastly, there's the 0.786 Fib retracement level. This is the square root of 0.618 and represents a 78.6% pullback in the price. So let's run through a few examples of the different Fibonacci retracement levels in action. And this time we're using the one day chart of Solana. Here's the 0.618 Fibonacci retracement. This time the price retraced 61.8% of the previous rally before finding support. This is what we call a bullish Fibonacci retracement. The price then took another leg up. And after topping out, the next drop retraced 50% of that price rally towards the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement level in blue. And here's an example of the Moderna stock on the one month chart retracing to the 0.786 Fib level in green before finding strong price support. Okay. So we've covered Fibonacci retracements, which you can think of as potential pullback targets in the opposite direction of a price move, which can be up or down. Fibonacci extensions apply the same concept, but instead they focus on where the price might extend to in the same direction of the initial move. So let's look into that. So here's the same S&P 500 one month chart from earlier in this video, and I'll use it to show a Fibonacci extension to the 0.618 Fib extension. As I mentioned, a Fibonacci extension is when a price move, up or down, extends by a certain percent of the original move in the same direction of that original move. So let's start at the 2009 bottom, 0.1. The index rallied all the way up to 0.2 without any major pullbacks on the one month time frame. It then pulled back to 0.3 to make a higher low. From 0.3 it rallied to 0.4. Now this was a 0.618 Fibonacci extension level. In other words, the leg up from 0.3 to 0.4 was 61.8% as big as the first leg up from 0.1 to 0.2. Of course, in major bull runs, the price can extend to much higher Fibonacci levels than the 0.618 extension. In fact, in super strong trends, the Fib extensions can get as high as 4.618. That's what we saw with gold in the 1970s and 80s over here on the 3 month chart. The first move up from 0.1 to 0.2 was big. The price then pulled back from 0.2 to 0.3. But the next leg up from 0.3 to 0.4 was the real money maker. It was 461.8% as big as the first leg up from 0.1 to 0.2. So not a bad time to be in gold if you ask me. So just like Fibonacci retracements, you can also have bearish Fib extensions. Here's the one week chart of Ethereum bottoming out at the 1.618 Fib extension in two different bear markets, one after the other. So here's the first one. The second leg down from 0.3 to 0.4 was 161.8% bigger than the first leg down. And here's the next one. Again, the second leg down from 0.3 to 0.4 was 161.8% bigger than the first move down. So that's it for this video on Fibonacci levels, and here are the key takeaways. Number one, Leonardo Bonacci, aka Fibonacci, formalized the Fibonacci sequence in his 1202 book, Liber Abaci. 
but it was first discovered by ancient Indian mathematicians much earlier. Two, Fibonacci numbers mysteriously appear all over nature, and in price charts too. Three, a Fibonacci retracement is when a price move, up or down, retraces or pulls back by a certain percentage in the opposite direction. Four, a Fibonacci extension is when a price move up or down extends by a certain percentage of the original move in the same direction as the original move. And finally, number five, you can use Fibonacci retracements and extensions as areas of potential price support or resistance. So that's the end of our section on trading indicators. Between moving averages, the RSI, Bollinger Bands, and now Fibonacci levels, you've got all the ingredients you need to become a profitable trader. Also remember to combine these indicators with the knowledge you gained in the previous section on understanding price charts, including candles, trading timeframes, compression patterns, and W and M patterns. While you might be tempted to spend more time learning other indicators, I would strongly advise against going down this rabbit hole until you get the hang of what you've already learned in this course. I've been there myself, and believe me when I say this, analysis paralysis won't do your trading any favors. In the next and final section of this course, we'll wrap up with a crash course on using TradingView, so you can implement what you've learned into your own analysis. So thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you in the next video.